ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ونوله ما بعد Of the greatest of the Sahaba, of the younger generation, the Sahaba are generally divided into two generations, the earlier and the later. And the later are those that lived after the 40th year of the Hijrah. Of the greatest of them was Abdullah ibn Umar, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he fled the fitan that were taking place and he sought refuge in Mecca. He didn't participate in any of the civil wars. And he was a very pious person, always doing tawaf and praying and fasting. So he would do tawaf regularly. It is reported that once he was doing tawaf and his students were around him and there's civil war going on. People are dying. People are being killed. And he said, looking at the Kaaba, ma a'zamaki, ma a'zama hurmataki, ma a'zama sha'naki. He's praising the Kaaba. How glorious are you? How majestic are you? How sacred are you? How holy are you? He's in awe, doing tawaf around the Kaaba. His students are listening to him. And this is a time of civil war and bloodshed. And then he says, But the life of one Muslim is more sacred and precious in the eyes of Allah than you. Hurmatu mu'min, one believer, his life is more precious in the eyes of Allah than you. Now some of us hear this and we are shocked. What do you mean? The Kaaba versus the believer? But this is what Ibn Umar is saying. And where is he getting this from? From the Quran and Sunnah. What does Allah say in the Quran? Whoever kills one person, it is as if he has destroyed all of mankind. All of mankind. وَكَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ فِيهَا We prescribe to the children of Israel. Ironically, the verse is about the children of Israel. Allah revealed to them that whoever kills one soul, it is the equivalent of killing all of mankind. And our Prophet wasallam said, as reported in the hadith of Bara ibn Azib, the annihilation of this entire world, lazawalu dunya, is easier for Allah than the shedding of blood of one believer. If this world were to just be gone, it's not here. لَأَهْوَنُ It is easier. It's less of a crime. Meaning if the world didn't exist, if all of this just woof, disappeared, vanished. It is lesser of an issue in the eyes of Allah than killing one innocent believer. And our Prophet wasallam warned against the sin of killing and shedding blood. He said, on the day of judgment, the first thing that a person will be asked about is the blood that he shed of anybody else. And he said that a mu'min, a believer, مَا يَزَالُ فِي فُسْحَةٍ مِّن دِينِهِ There's always going to be leeway for him. There's some room. Inshallah, he'll be forgiven. As long as he doesn't shed blood that he wasn't allowed to shed. As long as his personal sins between you and Allah, be hopeful. Inshallah, be hopeful. Any personal sin, it's not a license. But it's like, okay, there's hope. But when does the door of hope almost shut down, if not completely shut? When innocent blood is shed. A man came to Ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Prophet wasallam, And he said, O oh, Ibn Abbas, will Allah accept the tawbah of a murderer? Now, pause here. You know, in this early phrase, you know, still developments are happening, different opinions are there. Some of these opinions were a little bit on the left or right of the spectrum and they get left out and they're simply reported. At this stage, Ibn Abbas, and is famously known from him, he had a position that later on was modified, meaning he doesn't, it's not something that is mainstream anymore. But at that early stage, the de- development is still happening. So Ibn Abbas said, wait, wait what did you say? Mada qult? Repeat your question. So he said, هَلْ لِلْقَاتِلِ مِنْ تَوْبَةِ Will Allah ever accept a murderer's tawbah? He said, what, what did you say? He said three times, say it again, say it again. And then he snorted in contempt. <laughs> what? Mah? Mah means what? What are you talking about? Do you know what I heard the Prophet ﷺ say? Ibn Abbas, by the way, had the fatwa that the two unforgivable sins are shirk and murder. That was his fatwa. This position is now not mainstream. As you know, the, the majority of Sahaba and later Ahl-Sunnah, they said, 
if a, a, a murder repents, inshallah, there's also forgiveness, he makes kafara. But Ibn Abbas had the fatwa, and we're going to hear it now, that the murderer has no tawbah. He said, what did you say? Tawbah for the qatil, for the murderer? I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say that the one who was murdered will be resurrected headless. He will be carrying his head in his own hands. The blood is going to be pouring out, d- dumping out. And he will raise his head to Allah and say, Oh Allah, so and so kill me. Oh Allah, so and so kill me. And he will proceed until he reaches the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal will respond to him. Ibn Abbas said, what tawbah? How can there be tawbah for the qatil? And this is based on a verse of the Quran as well. By the way, this is a hadith in Muslim Imam Ahmad that he heard the Prophet ﷺ say. This is based on the Quran as well. That whoever kills a nafsan mu'minan, a, a Muslim, a, 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 a mu'min soul, he shall be in naru jahannama khalidan fiha. The word khalid is used in the Quran. It's only used for two sins, shirk and also once it is used for murder. By the way, Ahl sunnah later on said, Allah didn't say khalidina abada. The word abada is not there. Khalidan could also mean a very long time. That's the technical, you know, the theological way out. Nonetheless, Ibn Abbas held the view, there is no, the one who does murder, that's it, it's gone. Now why am I mentioning all of this? We see what is happening in the land of Palestine. We see what is happening with innocent souls, abriya, children, women. We see what is happening of buildings collapse and bombs falling. One of the most highest concentrated places on earth is the open air prison that they call Gaza. The open air prison. One of the highest concentrations. And we see what is happening over there. Wallahi, one side is sad, traumatized. But I'm going to say something, don't misunderstand me. One side of me is extremely elated. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never allow such blatant zulm, such blatant injustice to flourish. It is impossible in the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that innocent lives are taken, children are killed. And nothing happens. So insha'Allah ta'ala, insha'Allah, this is the beginning of the end. This is the beginning of the end. The level of brutality, the level of desperation, the level of kibr, the level of jabarut that we are seeing. And even from this entity, we did not expect it. And we are seeing it ra'ya al-ayn. Insha'Allah, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى لَيُمْهِلُ الظَّالِمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes allows some leeway to the zalim. لَيُمْهِلُ means gives him some time. He lets him go. فَإِذَا أَخَذَهُ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds on to him this is what Surah Al-Buruj said inna batusha rabbika lashadid batsh in Arabic means the grasp of course it means here the power of Allah inna batusha rabbika lashadid when Allah wants to grasp when Allah wants to take his hand and take the zalim who can possibly be safe from that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah might give laxity to the zalim for a period of time but when he holds on to him not if when faida. It's not a possibility. It's not a maybe. No. When the zalim is hold and held account, he will never let him go. Lam yuflitu. Never going to be able to escape the grasp. And this is exactly what I recited in the first verse, in the first raka'ah as well. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and this was revealed when the Muslims were being persecuted, and the Muslims were being killed, and they saw with their own eyes Sahaba being torn apart, Ammar and Sumayyah being killed in front of their eyes, Bilal being dragged in the streets of Mecca. When they were seeing this, what did Allah reveal? Surah Ibrahim, I recited, it is a Makki surah, middle Makkan surah, when the adha was at its pinnacle. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا Don't ever think that Allah is not aware of what the zalim is doing. This ayah was revealed in the context of adab, in the context of persecution, in the context of death and fitna and fasad. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ Never ever think that Allah is not 
not aware of what the Zalim do. Innama yu'akhiruhum. Allah is letting them. Allah is going to take care of them, but maybe not in your time frame. But Allah has a time frame. And if this dunya we see it, alhamdulillah. If we don't see it in this dunya, then for sure, liyawmil hisab. For sure, on the day of judgment. Muhti'ina, muqni ru'usihim, la yartaddu ilayhim tarfuhum, wa afidatuhum sawa. Go read the tafsir of these verses. End of Surah Ibrahim. Allah describes the terrified state of the Zalimun. Their eyes are glazed. Their hearts are empty. Their chests are in the throat. They're looking in panic. They don't know what to do. The vivid imagery that is given is for the Zalim. Muhti'ina, muqni ru'usihim, la yartaddu ilayhim tarfuhum, sawa. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how could you have done this? You lived in this world and you saw the fate of those before you. Didn't you pay attention? Allah spoke to the Quraysh. You were here. You saw what happened to those people. Why didn't you pay attention? And as for this particular qawm, they don't even need to see outside of their own qawm to see what happens to tyrants and what happens to those who reject Allah. They don't even need to look at outside history. Their own history is enough of a lesson if they only benefited and learned. But they have turned a blind eye. And they have done to innocence what others did to them at a time when they might have been innocent. And they have taken on the tactics and the kibr and the brutality of the very people whom they said never again. Now many academics and many people are drawing comparisons with exactly what this qawm is doing with what happened to them 80, 90 years ago. The tactics are the same, but the sides have flipped. And just like that qawm went into oblivion, so too Allah Azza wa Jal will not allow any qawm based upon injustice justice to flourish. So brothers and sisters, wallahi our hearts are very very perturbed and they should be but inshallah we also have a good sign and a good news that this level of jabarut this level of kibr, this level of evil, this level of zulm Allah Azza wa Jal will not allow for it to flourish. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that fear the dua of the one who is oppressed. Fear the dua of the mazloom, the innocent woman who has lost child after child. And then she comes and says, Alhamdulillah, Allah bless my children to be shaheed. The father who died, who, who sees his child die, and he says, Allah has chosen him instead of me to be the shaheed. That is what you call iman. These are a people whose iman doesn't have to be tested. It has been shown. We see it. We see the reality of iman. What will these tyrants do when that mother raises her hands and says, Ya Rabbi, what will the tyrants do when that father, that 80-year-old man raises his hands and says, Ya Rab, I lost four children and my wife. My entire life is all gone in front of my eyes and I still thank you for all that you have given me. But Ya Rab, take care of those tyrants and volumes. Wallahi, the greatest superpower on earth will be powerless when the adab of Allah comes down. No missile drone, no Star Wars program, no nuclear force can protect against Allah's qadr when Allah says, Kun so our job, brothers and sisters, our job, what can we do here? Make dua, raise awareness, but always remember that insha'Allah ta'ala, zulm will never flourish and we're going to see the end of tyranny and injustice. Insha'Allah, ala inna nasrallahi qareeb, ala inna nasrallahi qareeb, ala inna nasrallahi qareeb. Keep on repeating this verse. Have iman and tawakkul, have husna dhan in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then ask Allah for forgiveness forgiveness for our own incapacities and incapabilities. Ask Allah Azza wa Jalla that He doesn't call us to task and He doesn't call, put upon us a burden more than what we can bear. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to protect our brothers and sisters in Baytul Maqdis and Aqsa. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to forgive their shuhada and accept their shahada. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to help those that are striving in that region and protecting the religion of Islam. We ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to give them thabat and to give them quwwah, to give them shuja'ah, to give them courage. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give sabr to those who have lost and to those who are struggling. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to show us through them the izza of Islam. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to take care of the tyrants, to take care of the oppressors. We ask Allah, the Munzilul Kitab, the one who revealed the books, the one in whose the whole dominion is in his hands, the one who sent down the angels for Badr, the one who sends down Jibreel and Mikail to help the messengers. We ask Allah, the Rabb of the thrones. We ask Allah subhanahu 
subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the power and the qudra of how he can deal with those who oppose him. Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, you are our mawla, we have no mawla other than you. Ya Rabb, you are the one who takes care of the poor and the weak and the oppressed. We plead to you and beg to you, Ya Rabb, that show us in them the power and strength and give sakina and rahma and shower upon the believers your mercy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow all of us to do that which is good and useful and may Allah Azza wa Jal make us instruments of khair and barakah and may Allah Azza wa Jal protect us from ever helping the tyrant and oppressor from ever legitimizing the rule of the tyrant and oppressor we ask Allah for the izza of this world and the akhirah wa akhiru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh